situation in Singapore, the gap is widening. You know, you take one foot forward, two feet forward again by other communities. All the time, all the time. To, to achieve a result in, you know, in O level, five A's, not enough, not enough. Universities, you have all these A's, 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 no guarantee you get admission. For the simple reason, Singapore operates this thing, this term called meritocracy. The only top scorers will get the place, you know. So, that is a problem. So, when you compare with non Muslims, the gaps will be seen here. If this work, yeah, yeah. No, I think the battery is just not. It comes and goes. Ah, okay. So, no, it's okay. It's okay. okay. So you see the gaps in education, economy, income, and so on. And I see more figures. I'll just show you quickly some figures emphasizing the gaps between Muslims and non-Muslims. So. Despite Muslim education and Muslim students performing very well, but not enough in the context of Singapore. Because good in some of the contexts may be excellent in Singapore, it's just average for Muslims in a competitive meritocratic environment. Now, this has statistics, official figures, you know. Ethnic groups here refers to Malays, Malays refers to Muslims. Uh, the gap is there in a period of 10 years. Uh, PSA level, this is old level in a period of about 20 years. Um, the graphs, is, you know, I know it's not very clear, but really the message is simply the persistence of the gap in education performance at all levels of the national exams. Uh, secondary school, going to college, going to university, and so on. If you look at the economic gap, uh, you will also be looking at the same picture. You look at type of occupation, the bowl, are the Malays referring again to Muslims? Just take a second to glance. But the types of occupations are really not enviable. You look at, you know, you know, the top managers, executives in the government linked companies, surveys and surveys, quoted all the figures, not a single Muslim in all these places. Again, for the benefit of outsiders, people who doesn't know so much about this region and Singapore, Malays, and Malays refers to Muslims. All Malays are Muslims. Now look at income and the types of, you know, occupations. Uh, some of these details we can discuss during question and answer if you like. Uh, this is a worrying trend for Muslims in Singapore Muslim youth. It's also happening in many parts of South Asia. I know this from the research. In the capital cities in South Asia, a recurrent problem, drug addiction among Muslims. Most cities in South Asia. Now Singapore doesn't escape this. High divorce rates. High divorce rates. Uh, roughly for, for an update and today, and look at the last figure here. For every four marriages in Singapore, Muslim marriages, one will end in divorce. So, Modern, happy, progress. What happens? The family institution is breaking. <coughs> Youth delinquency, illicit sex and abortions. It fills up with common stories in newspapers. You don't want to read them anymore nowadays. Uh, figures, facts, figures, reports in the papers. It's not my words, it's just letting you know all these things. It's all reported. A free mixing this gender and so on. It's just really, it's uh, just like any Western modern city. Health issues. Health issues, Muslims. Broadly, Muslims, when they talk about Muslim youth, when they are included in the, in the categories diabetes, cancer. 
many, many, many Muslim women smoke in Singapore. It's, um, in some of the cultures, it's just not accepted to turn people to that. And this is where I want to focus a bit today. Uh, really talking about values, ideology, agenda. Uh, in a big way, you would know that, you know, being a Blasi today and also talk about identity, I was nodding listening to him because I said in my heart that, you know, uh, whatever he's saying is being shared by a lot of uh, Muslims in Singapore. And a lot, I, I would argue, uh, Muslims in different parts of the world, urban cities, capital cities in the world. That is the other side of the rosiness of the picture of living in a global city. <laughs> the benefits and disbenefits of uh, information technology. Uh, Singapore is one of the most advanced in the world. Uh, IT is everywhere, computers everywhere, even preschool. Now they're putting in all computers and so on. Yeah. But the issues of alienation, the issues of spiritual antennas, the emotional rejectionism, the loss of faith in key institutions of family, of respect for elders, of cultures, of mannerisms, of other, all these things are just, you know, not as solid anymore. These are worrying trends. Uh, sorry, I'm being so fast. I know somebody copy notes in there. You would realize it's good for you now to know shorthand. Uh, uh, but, but you know, we'll discuss all these details and uh, other issues coming up, you know. Uh, philosophically, it is something, I, I think we are living in the age of the Hadith, the age of Fitna, a Fitan. Um, uh, there are two types of Fitan uh, here. One is Shahwat, and uh, Shahwat is, as you know, is, is more, if you like, physical sen sensuality, issues of women, issues of, you know, um, uh, those kind of vices and so on. But the more dangerous one is Shubuhat. Uh, but I think uh, Shubuhat is something that, you know, the, 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 the things which people, including Muslims, are being shown and, 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 and said to be true, to be good, in fact, it's a facade. It brings them to Jahannam. And that's Shubha. It's, it's a facade of goodness, hide behind the veil of negativities that people are not realizing they are immersing their life like that. This is, the, uh, this is quite interesting.